This is Mike Bush, and in this video, I want to show you how I lap an aircraft exhaust valve in place without removing the cylinder or even dropping the exhaust. Uh, this came up recently in an annual inspection of my Cessna 310 when I discovered that one of the exhaust valves in the number six cylinder of the right engine uh, was looking sick under the bore scope. The compression wasn't terrible, it was 58 over 80. But the valve looked like it had stopped rotating, and I suspected that perhaps the rotocoil uh, had stopped functioning. In any case, I wanted to see if I could remediate this before the valve got too bad. Uh, looking at the valve closely with the bore scope uh, it showed that there wasn't any significant metal erosion yet, and so that this looked like a good candidate for lapping in place. Let's start with the tools and materials that I use to perform this procedure. I purchased a tin of this Chemico oil-based grinding paste from Amazon. It comes with both coarse and fine paste in the same tin, and I used both. Also from Amazon, I purchased a pack of a hundred of these six-inch long plastic foam tip applicators used mostly for gun cleaning and I used a heat gun to put a bend in their handles about an inch and a half from the tip. Battery-powered variable speed cordless drill like this Makita. Some 3 8 inch ID tubing that will slip over the valve stem. A valve spring compressor of some sort. 25 feet of quarter inch nylon rope and perhaps most importantly, a high quality bore scope like this Full HD Vividia VA400 with its articulating camera. When I inspected the tip of the exhaust valve, I did see what looked like a wear pattern indicating rotation may have stopped. So I decided to test the rotator by marking it with a sharpie and then tapping it repeatedly with a rubber mallet. At first it seemed like it was not rotating, but then much to my surprise it did start to rotate counterclockwise as I continued to hit it with the mallet. So much for that theory. To facilitate removing the valve springs, we use the rope trick, filling the combustion chamber full of rope and then pulling the piston up tight to keep the valve from going into the cylinder. Then we use the valve spring compressor to compress the valve springs and remove the keepers. The next step is to slide a length of 3 8 inch ID plastic tubing over the tip of the valve stem. Although the plastic tubing can be secured to the valve stem with some safety wire, I find it more secure to use a small stainless steel breeze clamp. A 3 8 inch drill bit is inserted into the other end of the tubing, secured with a tie wrap, and chucked in the cordless drill. Now the tip of one of the applicators is loaded up with grinding compound, and the fun is about to begin. We now switch to the bore scope so that we can see what we're doing inside the cylinder. The applicator that we loaded up with grinding compound is inserted through the lower spark plug hole. With the exhaust valve pushed wide open, we carefully position the tip of the applicator between the valve and the seat. The valve is then pulled closed against the tip of the applicator 
and rotated by hand to distribute the grinding compound around the entire circumference of the valve sealing surface. When the valve has been thoroughly coated with grinding compound, we push the valve open to release the applicator and carefully remove it from the cylinder. Rotating the valve against the seat produces a gritty feel and sound, verifying that we have plenty of grinding compound on the sealing surfaces. Now we're ready to start spinning the valve with the cordless drill. You can hear how it starts out sounding pretty gritty and then quickly smooths out in sound and feel. Here I have repositioned the bore scope so you can get a side view of the valve as it's being spun with the drill. At this point, we can open the valve and spin it around and take a look at our handiwork here. Uh, although the valve is still covered with quite a lot of grease uh, left over from the grinding compound, and we'll be able to get a better, better view of it once we've cleaned it off. You can see that the seat is, uh, is pretty clean, you know, which you'd certainly expect at this point. You can also see what stunningly detailed images the HD borescope from Vividia uh, is giving. So if your borescope doesn't give images this good, you might want to spend $250 and get a better one. This is just beautiful stuff. So after several iterations of lapping, first with a coarse compound and then with a fine compound, it's time to clean things up. We do this with another of these foam applicators, this time with the tip saturated with solvent. I used brake cleaner, but you could use acetone or, or whatever you like. Just as before, we capture the solvent saturated tip of the applicator between the valve and the seat 
and rotate the valve around uh, to clean the, uh, the, the residual grinding compound and grease off the sealing surface. You'll probably need to do this several times with several different swabs before you get things as clean as you need them to be. As you can see, this procedure is quite simple, very non-invasive, and with little practice, uh, you should be able to accomplish the whole thing uh, in an hour or two. Once we've got things as cleaned up as we can, it's time to install the bottom spark plug and do a compression test and see how well we did. As you can see, the cold compression reading on the cylinder is now up to 71 over 80, compared with the hot compression reading of 58 over 80 that we got uh, earlier. And what's most important, uh, there's absolutely no leakage audible past the exhaust valve. So this is very likely a successful lapping exercise. The acid test, of course, will be to put another 10 or 15 hours on this cylinder and then do another bore scope inspection and see if the valve has resumed a more normal, uh, symmetrical bullseye type appearance. I'm pretty confident it will. So if we can catch exhaust valve distress early enough by a frequent bore scope inspections, we can generally remediate the problem through a quick, easy, non-invasive procedure and avoid having to pull cylinders. And that's a good thing.